The following is a production of Learfield Sports. Brandon with 10, gets a pick from Griffey. Griffey now will get the pass, shoot a three, and got it! From exactly. the top of the key, 63-62, Illinois! Here goes Joe, to the lane, layup is good! Oh my goodness! And he's oh. foul! It's your world, Joe! Fighting Illini Insider is brought to you by Fighting Illini Energy, the official electricity choice of Illini Nation. The Illini Card, the official credit card of the University of Illinois. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Fighting Illini Insider. I'm Ryan Baker, joined today by Illini men's assistant basketball coach Dustin Ford. Coach, you're stepping in for Coach Gross, who's a bit under the weather. So, Coach, we need you to cut back to maybe one Starbucks or none. Get some rest because you got to save your strength <laughs> to get the team ready for Northwestern later this week. But Coach Ford, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Uh, it's been a, a tough week to say the least for the team. If you can, take the temperature maybe mentally as well as physically for your ball club after losing two double-digit losses uh, here and against Minnesota and then on the road at Wisconsin. Well, you know, I think obviously I think we, we got to continue to stick the course. And I think our guys have been really resilient all year with doing that. And it's the first time all year we got hit pretty hard. We got hit hard Wednesday night, got hit hard Saturday, and we're looking forward to getting back in the gym, working today, looking at the film from the last two games, to be honest, mm -hmm. and see if there's anything glaring in both games that we need to correct. And to be honest, you know, last Wednesday was a situation where we didn't make shots, and we rebounded the ball. Mm -hmm. So we were able to hang in there a little bit. And then Saturday, didn't make shots, didn't rebound. Right. And when both those things go together, you get the end result we had on Saturday. But I think at the end of the day, we're, we're going to be fine. We're going to stick the course. We're going to do what we do. We're going to lift weights twice this week. We're mm -hmm. going to practice hard. We're going to get back in the gym. We're going to get some shots. We're going to execute. And we're going to get back after it. Well, you and the staff, Coach Gross, you're not new to this. You know adversity is part of a college basketball no season. There's still 14 more to go. You mentioned that loss to the Gophers, 84-67, to then 74-51 to defeat at Wisconsin. Right now, let's take a look at both of those games with Brian Barnhart and Jerry Hester on the call. Welcome to Illini basketball tonight, another big one. They're all big in the Big Ten, but especially at home against a really good opponent tonight in Minnesota. The officials tonight, Terry Weimer, Lamont Simpson, and Steve McJunkins. Egwu to jump it up at center against Rodney Williams, and Egwu wins the tip. Top of the key, right wing to Abrams. Minnesota to man-to-man. -man. They will press, pass inside Abrams, found Egwu! Turn around and stuffed it in. Ford. Well, that's plus 145 in terms of three-point attempt. Oh, oh, man! Brandon Paul! Gets it out. They'll reset it to Brandon Paul. Down the lane. Brandon oh, with oh. the flush. Count it. Oh, oh Count it with foul. the flush. Stolen by Abrams. Here we go the other way. Tracy. Corner. DJ. Three. Got it. <laughs> Top of the key. Free throw line jumper. Joe is short. Rebound. Henry comes out of there with it. Henry to DJ, top of the key, three, good! Inbound, Egwu gets it back to Brandon Paul, left corner, three, it's good! Abrams into the front court on the dribble. Tracy hasn't played much tonight in foul trouble. Down the lane, Tracy layup, good! Boy, John Gross is jumping all over the place. Abrams, down the lane, layup, it's good! For the left hand! Between the circles, looking for an opening. Dribble drive, stutter step, down the lane, floater, bank shot, <laughs> Take over, Tracy. Right to left, Bertrand, stutter step in the lane, floater up and good. <laughs> Top of the key, dribble drive, Brandon, down the lane, off balance, good, count it, and he's fouled. Right wing DJ, looking for an opening, down the lane, scoop shot up and good. That's open, the yeah. lane is open. Looks at the three, guarded by Mbakwe, gonna fade away for three. Throws it to the basket, no good. Rebound inside, Bertrand, or DJ, excuse me. Richardson on the follow. Intentional foul, they run into foul trouble. Here's Richardson, entry pass to Egwu, who slams it in. He just turned around, he got away from Coleman. Not known as a real scorer, but done a great job here in the second half. Ball with a spinning move down the lane, puts it up with a left hand and in. Top of the three, didn't shoot it. John Gross says, why not? Three and a half minutes to go. Richards to the basket. Baseline layup good. Six seconds left. The Illini were down two, 44-42, and they lose 84-67. Bergren at 6'11. Nana Egwu at 6'11. Tap is won by Illinois. Bertrand, Illinois still without a field goal. Bertrand in the paint. First jumper good. Bertrand will pull up. And the 
first bucket comes at the 12:30 mark of the first half. Right wing to Jackson. Great defensive position. All oh, Abrams, good yep. defense all the way around there. Got away from the three-point line. Can't even get a shot out there. Now DJ with a tough two, and he buried it. Richardson with two. And the Illini double figures at 11. And on fire. McLaurin with a catch, nearly bobbled it. Guarded by Bruce Lewis with the man to man out of Brandon Paul. Shoots a three over Kaminsky and got it. Brandon Paul with a three. He's got six. Ten seconds to the half. 39-17, Paul shoots a three and missed it. Rebound, Bertrand up to get it, put it up and in. Bertrand on the goal. With 1.4 seconds left. First half did Wisconsin on the 7-0 run. Abrams with an impossible shot of the lane that he made it up and in. I don't know how he did that. Jackson on in, DJ out of the the circle. Dribble to the right wing, opens up for three and got it. Richards in his first three of the day, he's got seven. Looking inbound to DJ, left corner, dribbles into the paint, drives, layup, they let it go, and he lays it in. And Richards with five and a half, nine for the game. Here's the lob inside to Evans, pass deflected, stolen by Illinois. Griffey comes out of there with it, to Abrams, Richards drives, layup, up, and good. Here's a steal by DJ, stolen from behind from Bergeron, pass ahead to DJ, and they reward him with a slam dunk. DJ poked it away, the Illini get it back in a fast break dunk for Richardson. Drives, poked away from behind by Paul, but Corrin's got the steal. The Illini with another forced turnover. Here comes Bertrand. Bertrand, drive, spin, down play, layup, it's good! Oh, now he's fouled! 35 left. The losses this year, among them to Florida, Creighton, Virginia, and at Marquette. In the lane, Abrams with an impossible shot again. Missed it, so tapped up and in by Mike Shaw. Evans with a hand in his face. Two good athletes there. Similar haircuts too, by the way. Bertrand with a floater, puts it up and in. Tough shot by Bertrand. Here is Griffey. Dribbles in, pull up from 16, is good. Good to see the ball go in the basket for Tyler. His first basket of the game. Bounds are 40 to 22. Here is Abrams in the lane, off balance shot, won't go. Follow up and good. Abrams put up his own miss. Six left. Abrams down the lane over Kaminsky, off balance shot, good. Abrams with two more. This one was a blowout. Wisconsin 74, Illinois 51. We spend more time in the gym with our brothers than we do with our families. We play through the pain because every game matters. We strive to be the teammates we want others to be. We play with toughness and togetherness. Illinois, our state, our team. Welcome back to Fighting the Line Insider. Joining me again is Dustin Ford, the assistant coach for men's basketball, stepping in for uh, Coach Gross, who's a little under the weather. Uh, coach, let's go back and, and dissect that loss to Minnesota. Of course, you talk about this Minnesota team. In a lot of the preseason talk, maybe they weren't there with the Indianas and Michigan, but once the season got going and the only loss they suffered was the Duke, that's a pretty good ball club that came in here in a matchup between two ranked teams. So you knew you were going to have your hands full with Minnesota. No, no, no question. You watch Minnesota on film, they're well coached, they're tough, they rebound. And we, th we felt like we did some good things in that game. We mm -hmm. competed with them on the backboard. The area that stuck out the most, to be honest with us, was transition defense. Mm -hmm. We felt that didn't get the ball stopped in transition at times the way we needed to. Guys behind the play weren't sprinting back into the play, giving us maximum effort in transition. And when you play a team the caliber of Minnesota, you can't give up 20-plus points in transition. You, don't, you don't want to make it easy for the exactly. Roger Williams or the Joe Coleman's or Mbakwe to get back there and get those and ones, right? No question, right. no question. So, we, so we, we tried to address that with our guys, you know, in mm -hmm. practice on Thursday, Friday. and But in the Minnesota game, I felt we competed. And we felt that during the game, we went back, watched the film. We had guys, we took three or four charges. We dove on loose balls. We screened hard. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a matter of they're a good basketball team. And when you make mistakes against a good basketball team, whether it be on the glass, whether it be in transition, they're going to make you pay. And our mistakes that night, for the most part, were in transition, and they made us pay. Of course, that one stings a little bit more because that was the Illini's first loss this season at the Hall. And the glaring thing on the stat sheet, you see three of 24 from beyond the arc, and that had been the staple of this team, how well you guys shoot the three-point ball. 
Uh, but, you know, at some point during the season, you're going to struggle shooting. Is that more of guys not taking the shots within the offense, within rhythm, or is it what other teams are doing to kind of make it harder for you guys? Because they, they see the scouting mm -hmm. reports. Everybody has tape on this team to keep it harder for you guys doing what you like to do, shooting the long ball. Well, you know what? I, I think it's a little bit of everything, Ryan, to be honest with you. I think it's not only missing shots, but when you miss shots, I think you got to look at it from a standpoint. How was the pass? Mm -hmm. Was the pass on time, on target, or the pass take him out of a shot? Was the screen good enough to where we got our guy the best look possible, or was it one where we missed the screen and it was a contested shot? Mm -hmm. So I think there are a lot of things that go into it, and those are the things this week we got to get back to getting better looks. We got to get back to making good passes. We got to get back to proper footwork when we shoot the basketball. Mm -hmm. We got to screen better, and I think our execution will help our guys make shots. We got good shooters, let's be honest. And DJ I, Richardson, 38% guy. We got good shooters. And I know you work on a lot of that in practice. I've been to several workouts. You guys are meticulous about those, mm -hmm. those things, the fundamentals middles and staying within the offense and what you like to do fundamentally. Let's move on to Madison, though. I don't care who you're playing. You spot a team of 14 nothing lead. Yeah, it's tough. It's going to be tough to win a ball game, particularly a Badgers team that doesn't lose very often at the Kohl Center. But, you know, that start seemed to give them confidence, and they had struggled shooting coming in. Then they couldn't miss. No question. Well, you know, you know what happened early in that game, to be honest. Our execution wasn't bad. We got the ball in the paint two or three times, but we turned it over or we didn't convert. Then we get a couple mm -hmm. open shots, we miss them, and then our biggest problem early in that game, though, to be honest, we turned the ball over two to three times. Right. And then on the other end, first shot defense wasn't bad, but they were playing volleyball with us, and they're tipping it in, and all of a sudden you're on the road in that type of environment, and the team's getting second chance points, and they're getting going. It's hard to stop that. And, and you mentioned the rebounding disadvantage. I mean, you're down uh, 43 to 24, I believe, is on yep. the boards. Yep. I mean, that, that's a difficult thing. And let's also mention the other on the road, you expect things not to go your way, but when Nana picks up three fouls in the first Tough. half, Tyler gets his head busted now you're down two front court players that's another challenge you have to deal with exactly exactly but you know as, as we told our guys after the game same thing here on Wednesday when BP went out with the bloody nose we had a similar thing Saturday like you said mm -hmm. we had Griff go out and Nana with three fouls you got no excuses we still have to find a way to compete on the backboard we got to find a way to execute and that's what we're supposed to do and we'll get it figured out it's it's like any team when you go through these segments of the year you're, you're gonna get hit in the mouth this is a good league you play good teams. It was another tough shooting night, particularly from three-point range, but it's got to be alarming when you see only two assists on the stat sheet. That's something I think you have to address, right? No, no question. And that goes back to, like I t talked to you about a little bit ago, about passing. You know, there are times, like, we need to go back and look at these shots we're missing. How's the pass? Mm -hmm. Is the pass good? Or did the pass move him three feet to the <laughs> left and he can't get his feet set? Right, right. If that's the case, it may be on a pass much of this shot. So I think there are a lot of pieces that go to it, and, and we're going to look at that, and, and we're going to get it corrected. Well, everything is a teaching moment for this coaching staff moving forward. The Illini is still 14-4, and 1-3, and three, though, in the Big Ten so far. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with you in just a little bit. But coming up, we'll uh, take a look at uh, senior guard Adrian Gosbold for the Illini women's basketball team. The Illini Lady Hoopers played in front of their largest home crowd this season on Pack the Hall Day here in Champaign. But unfortunately, Michigan State spoiled the party. Sparty came in here and stole a 79 to 75 win. Senior guard Adrian Godbold, though, dropped a career high 28 points in a losing effort. Godbold, who's been an absolute godsend since rejoining the team midseason, is the subject of this week's player profile. For Lyon, underneath Diamant, got free, missed a bunny. Right underneath, couldn't knock it down, and Godbold chases down the rebound. Godbold into the lane, off the glass, good, and she was fouled. The and one for Adrian Godbold. Chicago Bulls, shot town. I'm representing <laughs> Chicago Bulls, yeah. Neither team has launched a shot, a shot yet. There's a steal. Godbold steals the ball near midcourt. Takes it to the other end. Hesitates. Banks it off the glass and scores. I'm going to go with Derrick Rose on the men's side. On the women's side, it is Cappy Pondexter. Not only because she came from my high school, but I love her style of play. Alexis Smith dribbles in the big circle of Ohio State in the center circle. Long jumper, good for three as Adrian Godbold knocks down a tray. Art, drawing, painting, sketching. Um, I actually have a piece in the coach's office. It's uh, one that I did my freshman year here in class. We had to do it for an assignment. Number more dribbles. 
And then passes off to Smith. Inside, Godbold shot up. Good, Adrian Godbold. My mother, she's uh, coming up. She's very independent, single parent for a while. And um, she works hard to get what she wants in life. Smith looking over what is now a zone defense for Northwestern. Godbold underneath, reverse, up good, and she was fouled. What they call me here is Nunu, and um, I got that name from my aunt, Charmaine. And um, when I was little, there's a song, and the chorus to the song is like, Nunu, yeah, yeah, Nunu. And they said I would just dance when I was a baby, just dance. And she started calling me Nunu, so uh, it stuck with me. I ain't. Moses, long jumper, no good. Rebound, Godbold. Godbold on the run, stops, pops, just inside the foul line, knocks it down. Adrian Godbold. The best thing about playing for the university is um, the team camaraderie. And uh, I think we're one of the closest teams that I've ever played on and from hearing from experiences like with my team or friends that I have that play basketball, uh, they're not as close as we are off the court and we get along very well off the court. Crawford at the top of the key to Godbold. She drives in the lane up with a shot, good! And she was fouled. We spend more time in the gym with our brothers than we do with our families. We play through the pain because every game matters. We strive to be the teammates we want others to be. We play with toughness and togetherness. Illinois, our state, our team. It's time for the Illini update. The men's basketball team had a difficult week, losing both conference games against Minnesota and Wisconsin. On Wednesday, the Illini hosted the Golden Gophers but suffered an 84-67 defeat. Brendan Paul led the Illini in scoring with 21 points on the night. On Saturday, the team took on the Badgers but fell again in a 74-51 upset. DJ Richardson led the Illini in scoring with 16 points. Coming up, the team will host the Wildcats on Thursday, January 17th at Assembly Hall. The women's basketball team defeated Northwestern and Evanston on Thursday, winning 65-47. to Senior guard Adrian Godbold scored a game high of 20 points on the night. On Sunday, the team fell to Michigan State at home, 79-74. to Godbold led the team in scoring once again with 28 points. Coming up, the team will travel to Lincoln to take on the Cornhuskers on Thursday, January 17th, before returning home to take on Northwestern on Sunday, January 20th. The wrestling team began their Big Ten season with a 29-10 win at home over Purdue on Saturday. Seven of ten Illini posted victories over the conference rival. Coming up, the team will travel to Lincoln to take on the Cornhuskers on Friday, January 18th, before traveling to Minneapolis to take on the Golden Gophers on Monday, January 21st. The men's gymnastics team started their season with a win at UIC on Saturday. Six Illini gymnasts captured event titles, while freshman Joey Peters led the way with a win in the all-around and on parallel bars. Coming up, the team will compete in the Windy City Invitational in Chicago on Saturday, January 19th. The women's gymnastics team opened their season in Tucson, Arizona, finishing in third place on Saturday. Senior Alina Weinstein led the Illini with a second place finish in the all-around. Coming up, the team will travel to Ann Arbor to take on Michigan on Saturday, January 19th. Coming up, the swimming team will compete in the... 
Splash Bash at the Art Pool on Saturday, January 19th. For more information on Illini Athletics, check out FightingIllini.com. Assistant men's basketball coach Dustin Ford back with us. Coach, being a basketball coach is not only getting these guys ready physically, but you also got to you know, they teach them how to handle the rock in their hands and also between their ears. Mm -hmm. How much psychologist do you have to play this week because the team has lost four of the last six to let them know, hey, this is the same ball club that won at Maui, went on the road to Gonzaga, knocked off a top 10 team, and handled Ohio State here at home? No question. You know, it, I, I think it's a point that every team goes through this, to be honest. When you play in a conference the caliber of the Big Ten, That's right. you're, you're going to get hit a little bit. Particularly on the road. No question. <laughs> but, and, and we got hit. And now it's on our guys. So we got a veteran team. It's not the first time these guys have been through some of these deals where they had a little bit of adversity, and we got to respond. And I think by in order to do that, you have to be consistent with your approach, and that's mm -hmm. what we're doing. We were scheduled to be off yesterday. We took the day off. We're going to practice today for two and a half to three hours and have some preparation in there. We're going to practice tomorrow. We're going to practice today after that. We're going to play on Thursday. And I think you have to be consistent with what you're doing, and, and, and we're not going to panic. We have a good basketball team. Mm -hmm. We like our team. We think, we, we're, think we're, we think we're good. We think we can continue to get better. And we're looking forward to the challenges moving forward. Real quick, give me the scouting report on Northwestern. The Wildcats coming here on Thursday. I obviously, no, it's going to be a tough game because of their style of play. Uh, they're a team that shoots the three, uh, you know, really effectively. And that's an area we struggled to guard here lately from the three-point line. So that's an area of concern for us. And then they spread you out and try and, you know, back cut you with their Princeton offense. And it's going to be a challenge for us. But, you know, I think we have a veteran team that's looking forward to playing. I'm sure they probably wish we were playing tomorrow, to be honest with you. And we'll be ready to play come Thursday night. Always some extra juice when the Wildcats and the Alana hook up in a rivalry state in state match. Well, hey, great job today. Right, thank you. Thanks I for having show me. Coach goes to tape. You might have to come back every <laughs> week. All right, for Dustin Ford, I'm Ryan Baker. Thanks for joining us on Fighting Alana Insider. We'll see you next week.